right, folks, come on in to my lab. Watch your step. Uh, Igor kind of had an accident there. Nurse Cassie will take care of it. So uh, here's the door to Unicorn Ponyland. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else is in my lab. Oh, yeah, here's some x-rays of me. Ah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, here's my lab table. Ooh. Uh, excuse me, miss. Uh huh. Isn't this still the lab of Dr. Sanguinary? You know, that guy who used to spade and neuter all the people who play those stupid Facebook games? Oh, psh, him. Nah, he, uh, he packed up and left a while ago. Oh, snap. I was really looking forward to him signing my baby with this really big, thick, and smelly permanent marker. <laughs> hey, what are these on the table? Looks like a big circus tent. Oh, uh, those are Doc's pants. He must have left him here. But, uh, I wouldn't touch those. I think he probably had cooties. Hey, I had cooties when I was in third grade. It's a good thing I had cootie spray. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we reached the end of our tour, but I saved the bestest part for last. Yeah, we're gonna take a look at where I sit on my lab table. Yes. Let's show you, let's go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ta-da! Oh, I cannot wait to take a picture of this for my favorite social media website. Oh, the place where Nurse Carrie sits. Oh, out of my way. I drove all the way from Des Moines, Iowa to see this. And that concludes today's tour. Thank you for coming. Make sure you take a giant piece of souvenir sod from my front lawn on your way out. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for coming. Bye. Make sure you come again to my lab. Thank you. Bye. Nurse. What? Nurse Carrie. What? Nurse. What? Hey, I I just got out of my bubbly sponge bath here and and I can't find can't find my pants. Ah, uh, they were right there. Come on, quit messing around. I need my pants. I can't do a show without any pants because if I don't have any pants on, our ratings might go right up through the ceiling and then they'll give us an excellent time slot, probably uh, right after that show about the nerds that seem to have girlfriends. Now, quit fooling around. Where's my pants? Uh, have you checked eBay? eBay. Uh, uh, yeah, let's see uh, here. She's really funny. Let's see. Oh, there they are, just listed 30 seconds ago. Look at this. You gotta be kidding me. Uh-uh. Hey, they are. Somebody put my pants online about 30 seconds ago. It says, says, be the first kid on your block to own a pair of pants owned by the famous television horror show host, Dr. Sanguinary. Uh, uh, that's me. These pants are made out of 100% polyester and comes complete with Doc's wallet. Hey, my wallet, which contains his expired driver's license, his expired library card, and a senior discount card to Stuckey's from 1964, owned by a guy named Homer Delbert. I don't remember having that. Oh, and it also says here that these pants would be great to add to your celebrity pants collection and would look mighty dandy next to Alice Cooper's. Uh, uh, uh. These pants are also similar to the ones worn by Carrot Top on his 1998 Canadian tour. Oh, very nice. And, oh, look, they're at... $9.99 already. I can't believe it. And, hey, somebody just bit on him. What kind of sicko would want my pants? Anyway, I, I need my pants back. I, I, I can't have them wandering around online when I got a show to do. Hey, who's at the door? I excuse me, sir. Are you Dr. Sanguinary, the famous inventor? Well, I checked the business cards in my wallet, but somebody's got my wallet which are in my pants, which are online. So I have no pants. Oh, is it National No Pants Day already? Well, okie dokie then. No, 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 professor, professor. They only celebrate that in Canada. Oh, gosh darn it. And I'm wearing my special underwear I got from the Arbor Day farm. That's in Nebraska, don't you know? Yeah, I thought that was like in downtown Detroit. Doctor, we're from the government and we need your help. Well, what can I do for you here? Well, we're from the Developmental Institute providing war and death strategies. We need your scientific knowledge to make sure that this highly sensitive weapon of mass destruction works again. Well, uh, what's wrong with it? It's broken. It doesn't kill people. 
and we're prepared to pay you a very handsome sum to make this device operational again. So uh, what exactly does this uh, hunk, hunk of junk do? I can't tell you, I'm sorry. It's, it's classified. All right, well, could you tell me maybe a little bit about what kind of components are in it? Classified. All right, well, can you tell me uh, uh, who made it? That's classified. All right, well, where did it come from? The newspaper. Classifieds. Take a look at this thing here. Let's see. Uh, oh, I see the problem. Hey, hey, nurse, give me a paper clip. Thank you. You see, all you need to do is reconduct this uh, this junction circuit here, and a simple common paper clip will do the trick. So, voila! There you go. Your machine will now kill again. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, well, Doctor Sanguinary, I would like to give you the thanks of your entire government. And of course, that of all of our enemies who will very soon die an inhumane, terrifying, horrifying, painful, but entirely deserved death. <laughs> oh. Doctor, how much will you be billing your country for this great service? Well, you know, it took about, I don't know, five minutes of my time in a common paper clip, so I, I figure it's got to be worth something. Well, let's see if we can figure this out then. Um, let's see, we'll take minimum wage. Minimum wage. Uh, divided by five minute increments. Uh, let's see, carry the one. Um, let's see, get your hands out of there. I gotta start over now. You get minimum wage divided by five minute increments. Uh, wage. Carry the one. Uh, let's see, there's a zero there. Then we take uh, minus state, federal, and local taxes, um, a usage fee, a handling fee. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, don't forget FICA. Oh, thank you, miss. I almost forgot FICA. Uh, let's see here. And the FICA, and I think that leaves us at a grand total of 35 cents. And 35 I, cents? Yes, and I've got it right here for you, all in pennies. Oh. There, let's see, okay, there you go. Um, oh, wait a minute. There. Okay, there we go. Golly gee, oh. thank you very much. We better get okay. going. Wait, 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 you really you, should test this out. Well, you guys have fun murdering and maiming and destroying the countryside. <laughs> okay, we'll see. All right, now press that button right there. Okay, this one? Yeah, press okay. this one. Look at this. I got 35 cents. What in the heck am I supposed to do with 35 cents and pennies? You know, you should probably put those in your pants pocket, Doc, so you don't lose them. Oh, my pants pocket. That's uh -huh. a good idea. I think I'll do that. Oh. Uh, Igor, why did you roll the movie? And if you look over here, you'll see something called a wall. This is my wall to my lab. Check it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you look down, you will see my floor to my lab. Something called a floor. Now, floors are very important because they keep you from falling down all the way to the middle of the earth, and it keeps people from popping up from China. Hey, that's why there's so many Chinese buffets around here, huh? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Nurse Carrie, but don't you have, like, some sort of co-host on the show, like a Dr. Scalapini guy or something? Nope, just me. Here, watch the intro again. Oh. Hey, Nurse Carrie, what are all these cars doing in the front yard, and why is half of my lawn missing? Okay, tour's over. Come on, let's go. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Um, uh, grab a piece of complimentary sod from the yard, yard on the way out and go. Thank you. Oh, gosh. Whew. That was close. I'm from Kaplakistan, and I don't like the sod. Can I take the bush from the back? 
You cannot take any push from my back. Now go! Gosh. Losers. Hey, there's Carrie. There's... Take a look on your computer there and, and tell me what the skinny is on my pants. Uh, well, they're still $9.99. All righty. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I want to put a bid on them before I forget. I don't want the show to end and stuff. Okay. So uh, why don't you put a bid on there of, uh, let's say, $20. Oh dear, you've been outbid, Doc. I've been outbid? Yeah. You gotta be kidding me. All right, well, go do something like $40. 40, all right. Oh my gosh, so it's up to $100 now. You have some people that are bidding on your pants. What kind of idiots would bid on my pants? No idea. All right, uh, let's try something like, uh, um, I don't know, some ridiculous amount. How about $1,000? Try that. All right, you are the winning bidder right now at $750. And if you go up to $1,000, you get free shipping. Oh, goody, free shipping. I can hardly wait. All right, hey, somebody's at the door, quick. Come on in. They look oddly familiar. Are, are you Dr. Sanguinary, the famous criminal psychiatrist? Well, I am a lot of things, but Right now, I'm a, I'm a bit drafty, so please, be brief, as that's all I'm wearing. <laughs> We're with the government. I'm a federal agent with the District Investigative Police Women. And donut snacking. We've got this high-tech, newfangled lie detector machine, but we can't figure out how the heck to work it. It's got all this weird, goobly go foreign language thing on it, and... We don't know what to do. Well, uh, why don't you just contact somebody from the foreign country that you got it from? Well, Dr. Sanguinary, that would be a little difficult, uh, considering that every single person in the country that this was manufactured in uh, has been eliminated uh, by the use of a killing machine that, that you yourself created. <laughs> oh, the guilt, the shame that must weigh heavily upon your stooped green shoulders. All I did was put a paper clip in the darn thing. I didn't kill all those people. Last one to touch it takes all the blame, Mr. Oppenheimer. Ah, whatever. Well, it appears that this is a lie detector, and it makes an incredibly annoying buzzing sound, but we can't tell whether that means that someone is telling the truth or they're telling a big, fat, naughty lie. <laughs> well, you know what? I think I can solve that problem for you right now. Give me these transponder receiver thing ears. Oh, Nurse Carrie, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Could you please uh, attach these firmly to your body? You got it. All righty. My first question I got for you, dear. First question for you. You wouldn't happen to know anything at all about the big chunks of lawn that are missing from the front of my house. Um... No? Uh-huh. I see. All right, second question. It appears that over the weekend, somebody went out in my 1975 AMC Pacer and drove it thousands of miles to Florida just to go drag racing with Justin Bieber. You wouldn't happen to know anything at all about that, would you? That was so much fun. Oh, uh, wait, I mean, uh, no? Uh-huh. I see. You better ask for one more, Doc. Make sure it's a really, really tough question. Really tough question. All right, let me think here. Ah, I got something really good. You're scary. Who would happen to be the most handsomest, attractive, and wonderful man in the whole entire United States of America? Oh, that's so easy. It's Dr. Sanguinary. <laughs> Well, there you go, folks. I believe she is telling the truth. So, anytime that you hear a buzzing sound from this machine, you know you're getting an honest answer. Oh, that's just peachy keen. Now we can take it down to the maximum security penitentiary for the criminally insane and make sure that every single horrible, nasty murderer there actually committed the crime they've been accused of. What do we owe you for this great service to your country, Doc? Well, you know, I think you've wasted about five minutes of my time, so... Oh, well, that's perfect. Then, here's 35 more cents, all in pennies again. 
Boy, I sure hope you claimed a zero on your W-2, because you're really racking up the dough from us. <laughs> Let's get out of here. All right, uh, let me handle that. <laughs> they seem oddly familiar. Oh, so, uh, nurse, I, I got another question for you. Mm -hmm. When I was cleaning out uh, my pacer there, I happened to find this pair of uh, uh, young man's briefs hanging from the uh, rear view mirror of my car. And the, the tag in the back here has got a name written on it. It says Bieber. Uh -huh. You wouldn't happen to know anything about these underpants being in my car. I have no idea where those came from, Doc. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. All righty. Well, I'll tell you what, kids. Why don't you get back into a tonight's wonderful feature for you, and we'll be back in uh, just a little bit. Igor, roll the movie. All right, and to end our tour today, we end up here in the lab where all the magic happens. And we can even uh, take a look here where I sit. You guys can take some pictures later if you'd like. You, uh, you mm -hmm. must be pretty loaded being on TV and everything. Oh, pff. no, not me. I just, uh, the guy with the money is uh, Doc. I mean, uh, the janitor. I just paid him today, 70 cents and pennies. We better do this right, because we just got freed from the prison, and I don't want to go back. Has anyone killed a janitor before? No, but I killed my mother. <laughs> well, I killed my father. Who'd you kill? I killed my grandma. Gee, that's just flipping sick. Well, I'm ashamed to be near you. You're such a disgrace. Shh, shh, quiet, quiet. Here comes the janitor. We'll kill him together. Okay. Hey, hey, there's Carrie, there's Carrie. I think they got it all set here with the pants problem. You see, we shoot our TV episodes here at the Scottish Rite Theater. And because it's Scottish, I figured they've got to have a couple of kilts laying around that I could wear. <laughs> uh, Doc, you do know that they don't wear anything under those kilts, right? Oh, I'm way ahead of you, because for the rest of the show, I'm going commando. <laughs> uh. All right, buddy, hands up. I'm a very big, mean, psychopathic killer. And he wants a big cereal. <laughs> What? I'm over 35. That's hilarious. All right, use hand over the 70 cents or I'm going to have to mess you all up. Oh, no, please, please don't mess me all up because, because Nurse Carrie here said that I'm the world's most handsomest man in the United States of America and it was verified with a lie detector. Uh, absolutely. Just hand it over. All right, please don't mess me up. Here, here, let me just get in my pants pocket and I'll whip out the money for you. What the, what the f***? Uh, this guy's a sicko. Let's go. 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 We're out of here. <laughs> oh, great. Look who's back. Good grief. These people drive me nuts. Excuse me. Are you Dr. Sanguinary, the famous tinkerer? Well, I did take a tinkle this morning and it kind of smelled like asparagus. That's tinkerer. <laughs> tinkerer. Somebody who fixes things but has no clue what they're doing? Oh, like my father. He tried to fix a toaster once. And, and what happened? He got electrocuted. We never had toast again. <laughs> Doctor, we're from the government, and we need your help. Oh, let me guess. You must be from the, uh, I don't know, the division in protecting uh, wimps and dorks securely. No. We're from the Special Weapons Division, Area 52. 52. Otherwise known as Taco Cat. Taco Cat? Why would a government division call themselves Taco Cat? Easy, because Taco Cat, spelled forward, is the same as spelled backwards. Get it? Isn't that funny? It's just Anywho, we're here because the government is very upset at a rogue nation that needs to be eliminated immediately. However, our weapon of mass destruction does not appear to be operating any longer. Could you take a look at it? Well, the, 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 
The problem's obvious here. Uh, look at this. The paper clip that I installed earlier, it, it broke. And it's, you know, it's just a cheap office paper clip you can get anywhere. It's probably made in China and it just had a really high lead content. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Doc, your pants are up to $25,000 online. The auction ends any second. $25,000 on the light for my pants? Uh -huh. what, what am I going to do? Where am I going to get that kind of money? I'm, I'm going to be doomed to, to roam across the world with, with nothing more than a lab coat and a frown. And shoes. Oh, that's right. I got shoes on, too. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. I can easily fix this thing. All I have to do is use a government-approved Paper clip, you know, one that's been stress tested and sent through ballistics and stuff like that. Nurse, why don't you give me one of the professional grade paper clips, please? You got it. Well, that really sounds expensive. All right, well, you know what? This is very easy to take care of. I will just take said government grade paper clip and install it. And the circuit is now complete. And voila, your machine is once again fixed and ready for mass destruction uh, all over the world. Well, that sounds very expensive. How much is this going to cost us? Um, uh, hey, nurse, uh, uh, how much time we got left on that auction? Ten seconds. Quick, put in $25,001. Doc, Doc, you won! You won! I won! Huh? I got my pants back! I can't believe it! Let me tell you, folks, this fine little repair job of mine is only going to cost you just $25,001. That's... Great! Thank you so much, Doc. We should let you know that the president is trying to fix the economy right now with a bent Phillips head screwdriver that we sold to him for only $50,000. Well, that's very interesting. Well, your machine's fixed, so pay up and get the hell out of my lab. Uh, uh, uh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Have fun destroying things, kids. Oh, oh we will. Great. Third we'll world and fifth can't world wait countries. To try this oh, out. No. Tell you this, Doc, but those uh, those pants, uh, you got them some guy from some guy in Iowa. Yeah. So uh, Iowa. Let me think here. Priority mail shipping is usually in about two to three days, so I should be wearing my pants in no time. So it says here that Iowa uh, tried to be the first state to declare pantsless rights. Pantsless rights. Yeah, and the government just blew it off the map. That's that's terrible. It created this giant fault line canyon through the middle of the state. It can be seen in the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie, where a young James T. Kirk drives his father's sports car into it. I don't think your pants made it, Doc. They were in a tumwa. That was a nuclear blast epicenter. Oh, good grief. I can't believe this. You know, kids, I'm sure that there's a moral to this story somewhere. And if you know what it is, just go on Facebook and let me know. Uh, uh, uh. So, I think we should probably get back in tonight's feature. Well, at least you have your 70 cents. Hey, uh, where'd you put all that change anyway? Well, when you have no pants on, uh, 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 you don't want to know. Igor, roll a movie. Well, kids, that's all the time we have for you tonight, and we hope to see you again real soon for some more creepy and spooky fun. So here's Doc Sanguinary and the rest of the cast bidding you a good night. And, oh, Professor, I, I better give you your, your $25,001 back. Oh, great. Uh, have you got a paper clip for this? What, you think paper clips grow in bushes? I like it to bush. Ah, whatever. Goodbye, folks. See you next week. Dropped on my change.